Hi folks, another quick one on IPv6 here. A question that comes up in I think every single IPv6 training or consulting thing I've ever done is the question, should I use status status auto configuration or should I use DHCP? Short answer is yes. Long answer is it depends what you want to configure because there are a couple of things you can only configure with either one and um, that leaves you very little choice for a number of configurables. For example, if you want to configure even just an NTP server, unless I've missed some recent extensions in some obscure RFC again, you need the HCP because you can't do this with auto configuration. So if you need time synchronization, which is, according to some people, pretty much something everybody needs, or a lot of people need, you have to use DHCP. End of discussion. On the other hand, and this is a surprise for a lot of people, if you want to configure a default route or any routing information at all, you have to use auto configuration. DHCP with IPv6 doesn't let you configure a default route. Well, okay, you can hack things up. You can use uh, um, a vendor specific option with the HCP and then write some custom DHCP client script, for example, in the Unix world, to then use that to configure your default routing, but <laughs> doesn't really make much sense. And uh, that basically means for, the, for pretty much any setup that you want to use DHCP for, you actually need auto configuration as well. And even the standards, the RFCs, not supposed to say standards, maybe specifications, that's probably reasonable. Even the RFCs, um, they always assume that there is an advertising router telling a host, yes, please configure whatever else besides addresses or including addresses using the HCP. So, only question that's left is, what about those things I can figure either way? And Generally speaking, I suggest you stick with using the tools in the protocol layer you actually want to configure. So if we talk about NTP configuration, if we talk about DNS configuration, no, sorry, not NTP, um, zip configuration or um, DNS configuration, you can do with both. But I suggest you do that with DHCP because all of them are application layer stuff. If you did this with the uh, auto configuration, you'd mix up protocol layers. And the problem with that is that, yes, it frequently works and gets you a quick solution at, or result, should I say, and hopefully, hopefully somebody else will eventually pay the bill. Probably the worst fuck up, sorry, um, the worst way of having this done is what we've seen with IPv6. I've mentioned that in the previous video when applications actually have to deal with IP addresses which belong in the network layer, not in the application layer. Uh, it solved a couple of problems that way, but it actually means that an IPv6 deployment today is a problem as opposed to, for example, deploying a new link layer technology with new link layer addresses because the link layer addresses never matter anywhere near the applications or application layer. So there's a problem there. Basically, configure applications through the HCP. Best thing you can do and a lot of things you can't do otherwise anyway. What about addresses? Now, that's trickier. If you stick with the same reasoning, you should configure addresses using auto configuration because addresses are a network layer thing and auto configuration is a network layer thing so that's where things belong. The only reason why you might seriously want to consider DHCP aside from I've always done it like that and uh, stay away with this newfangled stuff, the new stuff never really works in the beginning anyway and uh, that sort of stuff is 
if you have to somehow keep track of the mapping of link layer addresses like MAC addresses and IP addresses. That might actually be a reason to use DHCP and the worst variety of this is when you have to make sure that addresses actually get entered into the DNS and you're not using propriety, proprietary Windows Active Directory uh, based approaches. Good. If you think that whatever your DHCP server logs is actually useful in a legal context, don't rely on it because there are so many ways to fake these things. It's just gonna you're just gonna make yourself look like a complete idiot if you have to deal with a reasonably technically competent um, adversary in court. Right. So. Why would I have, want to have some sort of not even bulletproof mapping between MAC addresses and IP addresses? It can, in some cases, be helpful tr for troubleshooting. Now, as far as I'm concerned, it's generally not worth the hassle. It is sometimes helpful, but that generally means that your network topology is not really the way it should be, which is worth another probably two or three episodes by itself. And um, if you want to use this for troubleshooting, okay, then you might have to go for DHCP. However, everybody's talking about this Internet of Things and I've done a previous episode on why it doesn't really quite pick up speed yet, but it's going that way. The problem is that this, yeah, okay. this is an Arduino Uno and this is a fairly big microcontroller. Well, they're significantly bigger ones, but they are also significantly smaller ones. has 32 kilobytes of flash for program code and 2 kilobytes of RAM. And you can't run TCP IP on this simply not possible. There are implementations that need 4 kilobytes of RAM, but with 2 kilobytes of RAM and an Ethernet frame being up to 1500 bytes long, 2 kilobytes just doesn't cut it. So what about these Ethernet modules you can get for them? First of all, this one's 25 euros, this is 50 euros. This is an Ethernet module for the, or Ethernet shield, I should say, stick with the official terminology, which can be put on top of the Arduino and then I get Ethernet. 10 megabits only, but that's good enough for a lot of things. The point is here, this little chip implements TCP IP, or should I say TCP IP before in hardware. Well, sort of. It's skipping a couple obscure features like fragmentation, but otherwise it implements IPv4. And you have to do it in hardware and you have to pay money for it. And the reason why this entire discussion about what to do with DHCP and what to do with auto-configuration is pretty frustrating in my opinion is because a lot of people spend quite some thought into making IPv6 more easily implementable in these limited resources devices. And then some people said, oh, sorry, let's do it properly. I've always done DHCP. I don't need this new stuff. If I don't get DHCP, I'm not going to touch IPv6. And then we have a problem. And some people caved in, probably made a bit of money out of that. And now we have a situation where end devices might actually have to support both or routers and DHCP servers have to be around both, which is a problem for the administrators because there's more work to do. And if we don't talk about professional system administrators, but about amateurs at home, having two different things doing the, effectively the same thing is a problem. It has to impl be implemented twice and it has to be handled twice. And expecting from an end user to decide which one to use is simply hopeless. 
uh, it's like having a switch on your car where you have to decide okay this is uh, gas from made from from uh, what uh, light arab crude oil or from norwegian some ultra heavy uh, oil that's been run through some sort of cracking process but rather than distilled and you have to decide okay what do i have to set it to doesn't make any sense you just expect you get the right kind of fuel in the car supposed to work yeah i know germans always talk about cars but I don't even have one actually. I rent one if I need one. And that happens rarely enough. Otherwise I go by taxi or by train if I can. Anyway, um, this is the sort of stuff that makes life difficult for a lot of people in the long run. And uh, if you have to set these things up, my suggestion is First of all, stick with the protocol layers. So do network addresses, routes through auto configuration and everything else which belongs to the application layer through DHCP or stateless DHCP, DHCP without address configuration, which makes DHCP a significantly less troublesome protocol. And um, then, well, deal with whatever sort of hardware embedded system somebody shows up and says I need this to work in our network and then you might have to support both address configuration through auto configuration and through DHCP in your network because some devices need auto configuration others need DHCP which is pretty much the worst thing that could have happened but well everybody's been talking about orthogonality since what the early days of Unix Unix was tremendously successful and powerful because people painstakingly avoided these things. We're talking about orthogonality, which means one way to do something and nothing else, at least when it comes to the kernel interface and so on. And that made Unix much more powerful on reasonably small machines than the, well, kind of competitor big iron stuff called Multix at that time and we've screwed that up yeah definitely only good thing is you don't have to screw it up in your own networks so just do yourself a favor take a look at auto configuration and decide that it is actually much nicer than DHCP when it comes to address configuration and just get used to it. It's not really a big hassle. And actually there's one story that I tell people in my trainings when it comes to this. There are several but there's one quick one I might as well tell right away. Uh, I used to have a Wi-Fi access point <coughs> which included a DHCP server which is what they usually do. And it was a cheap one I just bought it to take with me while I'm on the road for some reasons. And for the HTTP server that dishes out addresses, IP4 addresses in that case, that's been, I've, been, I've been throwing it out for um, about maybe half a year ago or so, because it actually broke. And um, anyway, this was cheap. So they took a couple shortcuts. More specifically, they didn't track who had which IP addresses address for how much longer. And they definitely didn't track that over reboot. That thing didn't even have, it didn't have uh, non-volatile memory to store the, uh, memory, uh, the address leases and it didn't have a real-time clock. So you powered it on, off powered it on again and it forgot who had which address. So what did it do instead? And a lot of other DHCP servers do this as a security or, or safety measure. It tried to ping an address before it actually dished it out, which is good. Then arrives Windows 7 or Windows Vista. Don't remember which one did that or which where I saw it first. You say you're in an untrustworthy network and they don't answer the pings. Yeah. So DHCP is difficult to implement in small devices in 
yeah, something like this again, sorry. Something like um, Wi-Fi access points. Home routers are actually fairly powerful, but even they might be skimping the non-volatile non memory. So that's a problem. Auto creation, on the other hand, leaves the entire thing to the end device. A router doing auto configuration, working as an advertising router, doesn't need to keep track who will have which address for how much longer. It just provides information about these are the subnet prefixes that I know of. And otherwise, I'm a default router. So you need a little bit of non volatile memory for the router configuration as such, but not to keep track of any clients or hosts in that case. And uh, yeah allows much easier standards compliant implementations that don't blow up in your face as soon as Microsoft releases another Windows version. So, so much about this question. If you want to discuss, if you have more questions on this, come over to the BIFBlog forum at www.stablighted-it.com slash BIFBlog slash 22. And uh, if you like this, if it helped you, do me a favor and give it a thumbs up on YouTube. And in any case, hopefully see you again soon. And next time I explain to you why the default route things with IP, with auto configuration are so much nicer than DHCP. But that's a different episode. See you then. Bye.